Okay, so the goal of this video is to approximate the area under this curve using n rectangles. Okay, so n rectangles here. And for simplicity, I'm going to assume that this curve is always positive. So the function is always above the x-axis. And I'm going to approximate the area between x equals a and x equals b, so this shaded region. And I'm going to approximate it using n rectangles. Okay, so the first thing is, um, for, to compute the area of each rectangle, I need to multiply the base times the height. So I need to figure out the base of each rectangle and the height of each rectangle. For simplicity, uh, I'm going to divide up my interval into n evenly spaced um, uh, intervals. And uh, so each base is going to be the same, right? So my total width, my total width is b minus a because I'm going from x equals a to x equals b. So that's b minus a of total width. And I'm using n rectangles. And so if I divide it up evenly, each base will be b minus a divided by n. So I'm just cutting it into n equally spaced pieces. And so when I do base times height, each rectangle is going to have the same base. So that makes it slightly easier. Um, so the, the main part is figuring out the height, right? So the area is going to be approximated by base times height plus base times height plus base times height. And I have to figure out the height of each of these rectangles. Okay, so. If I'm going to look at my first rectangle here, so I'm going to chop up. Um, this is going to be my, my base. So I'm starting at A, and I'm moving over by B minus A over N. So my first rectangle, this is going to be the base of it. And now I'm going to use the function to figure out the height. So I want to kind of make my height something that's approximately the same height as the function. right? And so it turns out that you can choose uh, any of the Y values that this function takes on this interval, and that will be fine. Um, for simplicity, I'll just use the right-hand endpoint. So I'm going to go to this x value. I'm going to go up to the function and use that y value. And so the height is going to be exactly the function evaluated at this x value, right, at this x value. And so how can we write that down? Well, I just need to figure out what this x value is. And this x value, well, I'm starting at a and I'm moving over by this base. So the x value here should be a plus the width of the rectangle plus b minus a over n, right? So that, that's how I determine it. And so the height of this rectangle is going to be f evaluated at that point. So the area is base times height, and the height is going to be given by f of a plus b minus a over n. So that's the area of my first rectangle. So now let's do the same thing for the second rectangle. So I'm going to um, move over one more width, base width, and I'm going to use, again, the height of the function at the right-hand endpoint to determine what the height of my rectangle should be. And so again, in order to this, determine this height, I just need to figure out what is the function evaluated at now this endpoint, right? And so to figure out this endpoint, I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll go from this point, a plus b minus a over n, that's the x value, and I'm moving over by one base width. So I'm moving over by b minus a over n. And so this x value should be a plus two times b minus a over n. So the area of the second rectangle is going to be f of a plus two times b minus a over n. Okay. I'll do the same thing for the third one. So the third one, I'll go here. Very similarly, the x value here should be a plus three times b minus n. So this becomes plus base, which is b minus a over n, times height, which is f of a plus 3 times b minus a over n. And I'm going to continue this for n terms, right? So I'm going to continue approximating with these rectangles, and I'm going to use n rectangles. And by the nth one, because of how I divided up my um, width into equally spaced pieces, the nth one will be right at the very end here. And uh, this will be base b minus a over n times height, f of um, there. So there were n terms, right? You can see the pattern. The first one, the first one, the x value is a plus one times b minus a over n. The second rectangle, the height is f of a plus two times b minus a over n. The third rectangle, the height is f of a plus three times b minus a over n. And so the the nth rectangle, this is going to be f of a plus n times b minus a over n. And if you multiply the n's cancel here, so this becomes a plus b minus a. So that's just f of b. And if we, if we look at the picture, that's, that makes sense, right? I'm, I'm taking the y value at this x, uh, x equals b, right? So, so that checks out. So this is, this is the formula for our area. And so whatever the function is, 
say f of x is x cubed or sine of x or whatever, whatever the function is, I can use the definition of the function to get an approximation using n rectangles in this way. Um, one note is that this function is positive, um, which means all of these heights will be positive. If the function goes below the x-axis, we have to be a little bit careful, but that's something that I'll talk about in a later video.